Uh, so welcome, those of you who are joining us, we'll have a prelude and then we'll begin worship. Carolyn, you're muted. Oh, yep, Carolyn, you have to unmute. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to the first Sunday of Christmas, which is a white Christmas that we did not expect. And no matter where you are worshiping from Whatcom County, we gather on the ancestral homelands of the Lummi and Coast Salish people who have stewarded this land since time immemorial. And we commit to the ongoing care of our shared land and relationships with its indigenous peoples. So I'm so grateful for technology that means that we can still gather for worship even in this winter wonderland. I mentioned before that I live close by and I have snow tires and I realized last night uh, an email, our automatic email went out saying that worship was in person today. I thought I better be at church just in case. So I'm glad nobody is here now uh, and I'm so glad that those of you who are on Zoom can be gathered together. If you haven't already, please gather some bread and wine or juice, um, perhaps a candle, perhaps a bowl of water later to remember your baptism. Um, I will be sharing my screen with the bulletin and the song. So uh, you can just follow along when you see that pop up on your screen. And just a note that the church office was already scheduled to be closed this week. So that was really good timing. And we won't be sending a church email on Thursday. And I will be off for a few days this week. But if you have a pastoral emergency, please know you can still reach me on my cell phone. And next week, weather permitting, we will return to two services at 9 and 11.15 with the education hour in between. And for those of you who have birthdays or anniversaries or baptismal birthdays, put those in the chat so that we can celebrate with you. So may God bless you another year through. Well, it's interesting. Today, our psalm, Psalm 148, has this line. Praise the Lord, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will. Sometimes we wonder, is this really God's will? But you do re remember that God created this amazing, amazing world that we live in that has weather of every kind that reminds us of the power of God and of nature that God created. And we especially remember today the power of God that came in that baby born in Bethlehem, whose life and death and we celebrate, whose resurrection is the reason that we are here. And today we continue the message and the meaning of Christmas. So today we will begin as we normally would in person with our confession. And I will share my screen once I find that. Give me just a moment. This is not like the pre-recorded worship we did that was felt a lot easier. <laughs> so here we go. Mm -hmm. 
And please join along with the bolded words at home. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who sends the word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the weak. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ, your sins are forgiven and you are clothed in peace. Amen. And now Carolyn will unmute and play and I will try to share my screen with the words of the hymn. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And if you are worshiping with other people, please share peace with them. May God's peace rest on your household. Let us pray. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word that in all things we may think and act according to your good will and may live continually in the light of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Tim, I believe, is our reader. And Tim, I will try to spotlight you. And please unmute and thank you for being our reader today. Tim, are you reading today? If you are there, I can't see you on my screen. If you could um, unmute yourself. Tim was there. Jory, do you see Tim? Pastor, I can read the first Jerry, slide. Thank you. That'd be great. Thanks so much. The first reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 2. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Ekanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift she has made to the Lord. 
and then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is from 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praises, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heavens of heaven, and you water above the heaven. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created. Who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail and snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and the praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Gary, if you would read Colossians, please. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen one, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must, be, must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, using psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. The Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. Now every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual to the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in a group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with great anxi anxiety. He said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. 
This is our uh, our first Zoom church. So thank you for bearing with us. Good morning. This is the Sunday after Christmas is one many of us don't look forward to. Uh, growing up, we always hoped that Christmas Eve would fall on a Saturday evening or a Sunday so we could get out of going to church twice. What kind of child wants to go to church two times in one week? Or worse, what kind of parent makes their kids go twice in one week? As my husband says, we aren't Baptists. Here we are the day after Christmas, and maybe we are filled with feelings of relief. Relief that the holiday rush is over. Relief that things turned out reasonably well. Relief that we don't have to go through all of this again for another year. Christmas is over, and in a few days we can take down the ornaments, recycle the holiday cards, and get our houses back to normal. Or maybe we're feeling relief that the pressure of putting on that holiday event for others has come to an event. We can say goodbye to other people's expectations for another season. We can say goodbye to our own expectations as well. Maybe we are feeling relief that a season of endless sweets has come to an end. We slowly and sluggishly turn our eye to the New Year's resolutions of diets, of more exercise, that like Toad in that beloved children's book, Frog and Toad, we soon, we think, very soon, will power as we eat just one more cookie. Every year, Christmas comes a bit earlier. The retail world says Christmas begins the day after Halloween, or even sooner if you wander down the wrong aisle of your local craft store. Some radio stations begin playing Christmas music on November 1st. It seems like during the pandemic that the lights of Christmas went up and have not come down since. Stores advertise Black Friday deals for weeks on end instead of a single day. We have even exported Black Friday deals to Canada who didn't celebrate American Thanksgiving the day before. What kind of effect does this have on us? The holiday season lasts longer and longer and it seems to go on and on but never arrive. We enjoy ourselves at the start. We indulge ourselves with holiday foods and the snacking begins in November. I know that some of you are just as guilty as I am about ordering a peppermint hot chocolate in November. But what does all of this holiday cheer going on for so long, what is its effect on us? With such a long season, our anticipation dulls. With such a stretch of holiday treats, we don't really savor them when we get to Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Think about the holiday season in the same way we used to watch TV. Do you remember before streaming platforms or TiVo waiting for your favorite show to air each week? Can you remember that anticipation? It is hard to remember with our endless programming choices at our fingertips. It's hard not to give in to binge watching more episodes than we mean to. It can seem almost impossible to make any choice at all with so many choices available to us at every moment of every day. And so too with the holiday season. Sometime in the middle of December, we are entirely done. Done with ever hearing that one Christmas song ever again. No more, we think. Enough, our spirits say. With such a long run up to Christmas, no wonder we are feeling relief when the day is finally over with. We have been celebrating since the beginning of November. We are all celebrated out. We are done with it. We are exhausted and maybe even a little bit cranky. With good reason too, we have done an awful lot of celebrating and no anticipating whatsoever. In the church year, what we Lutherans call Advent, we are called to wait, to anticipate the coming of Christ, not to celebrate it two months before it arrives. Can you imagine celebrating your birthday for two months before it gets here? 
How special would the day of your birth seem after your fifth birthday cake in two months? Who wants to sing happy birthday to you if you've been doing it for 60 days in a row? In the secular world, everything moves on. The ads for exercise machines and gym memberships appear in the mail and on our phones. And with the new year comes the new you, the advertisers proclaim. We are done with this story. Let's go find a new story in 2022. But for us Christians, for us followers of Jesus, Christmas has only just arrived. We are telling the story of a child born in a manger, of three wise people who follow a star and arrive to find their predicted king in the most unlikely of places. Those wise people are still arriving, still anticipating seeing the promised king, still hoping. In a similar way, we at Christ Lutheran Church or worshiping online from our home are gathering each Sunday to hear how the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and the child Jesus flee for their lives from Herod and become refugees. If Advent is the beginning of the church year, then Christmas is where things start to get interesting. Choirs of angels, the arrival of glamorous strangers from different places, fleeing for our lives under the cover of darkness. This is our gospel at Christmas time. Stick around, the stories say, there is much more to tell, even on December 26th. And telling these stories of Jesus is how early Christians made sense of their lives. They retold these stories of Christ's suffering and persecution, which helped them to endure their own suffering and their own persecution. They retold one another how Jesus cured the sick, calm the storms, and cast out demons to help them find the courage to call upon God for help in their own needs. The gospel, the good news, is the living word of God. It is a powerful word. It is a transformative word. And it's the same word our creator spoke into the darkness and void at the very beginning when God said, let there be and the whole of creation began to take form and dance in response to that word. For us today, remembering the words and deeds of Jesus helps make, us make sense of our own lives as well. Each one of us, each of our lives is a story, but it is also part of one great story, a love story recounted in the Bible. Our own story is part of the love story between God and God's people. It is the story of God's ages, ageless love affair with creation. When I am facing hard decisions, when you receive unsettling news, or we experience awful tragedy, it helps if I can remember I am part of the ongoing story of God's faithful love even if we don't quite understand how it fits right now. But I'm willing to believe that my whole life does make sense because I am part of the larger story of love being shown to us again and again, recounted and retold year after year. The story of our lives is part of a love story of God calling Abraham into the desert part of the love story of Yahweh freeing the Israelites from the bondage of Egypt. Our story, your story, is part of the same story as the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary, announcing the troubling good news. The very same story of a dark and chilly manger where Christ was born and laid in the straw. And also, we are part of the story that continues to that cold and empty tomb on Easter morning. But God's story of love doesn't end there either. God's story of love doesn't end when we leave church on Sunday. This story goes on even today, even right here, to you and me hearing about Mary and Joseph's worry 
over losing their 12 year old child to you and me hearing about the astonishment of the scribes and teachers at the temple at Jesus's wisdom and understanding to us hearing and reciting today's ancient psalm of praise. We are part of a great story of care and forgiveness, of mercy and compassion, of miracles and long, lonely nights. We are part of a love story that lays itself with us in the tomb when everything seems lost, and then raises us up to new life when all we could see was death. God's good news continues out into the world. The word of God accompanies us from our baptism all the way until we travel home with God. Hearing this story reminds us that we have a God of love who is speaking to us, speaking to you, even now, even today. We are reminded that we are living out God's story of love that Christmas is still happening even on the 26th of December. How did Christ come to me today as he came into the world so long ago? Who is Christ for us in this hour? Scripture beckons us to reflect this week as we put away ornaments, take down trees, and say goodbye to another hot holiday season. How? Is Christ coming to us without the wrapping paper, without carols being sung, even without the nativity on display in our homes? How is Christ coming to you now? Where is Jesus arriving long after the last undesirable gift has been returned to the store? Jesus is still coming into the world and into our lives. How is your own story caught up in the story of God's ongoing and faithful love? Thank you, intern Pastor Jory. For the next hymn, and Carolyn, you will need to unmute, and I'll ask you actually to play all the verses of this hymn. I'll put the music on the screen, but I would also encourage you to take this time for intentional prayer, for remembering your baptism, lighting a candle to pray for someone in your life. Um, this could be a time that you write an offering check or uh, do an electronic gift to the church for your year's end. Uh, and just sit in the gift of this Christmas, the message of hope, of love, of peace and joy coming close to you in the child of Jesus.
Now I will share my screen and together we will profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed in just a moment. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in the diverse wonder of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation, that we live in service to you and the natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, friendship, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through people whom the world forgets, poor shepherds and an imprisoned Paul announcing your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any need this day, especially those who we lift to you now, aloud or in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And now may our own prayers rise to God during this time of silence. You come to us through those who have died and yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, deacon, and martyr who gave his life to tell the story of your love. And today we also give thanks for the lives of Pastor Bob Johnson and Pastor Desmond Tutu. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. For communion, I will spotlight my picture 
so that you can see the elements. And like I said, I hope that you have uh, gathered bread and wine or juice and you're welcome to go do that now so that you too can partake of this meal, this gift of life that God enters no matter where you are worshiping from today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to share communion with yourself or another using the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And during that time, Carolyn, you can unmute and play the hymn. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, the word made flesh. Amen. Our sending song is joy to the world.
Go in peace, rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God. Be to God.